so welcome to lecture 3 lecture 2 in this lecture we'll talk about the electric field so let's talk about the electric field so after this lecture we should be you should be able to calculate what is electric field strength and you should be able to draw and interpret the electric field lines and you should be able to identify the four properties associated with a conductor in electrostatic equilibrium so let's start with electric field strength so the name itself says it's so we talked about electric force so we said that electric force is a field force that field force comes from a certain field that field here is the electric field so electric field is the region where an electric force on a test charge can be detected so for example think about it uh, you know like a magnet so the more closer the, you bring the iron piece towards the magnet so the more you can feel the force applied by the magnet so the similar to that electric field is the region where you can test whether there is an electrical force or not so the si unit of this electric field is measured in newton per coulomb so and the direction of the electric field is the same as the direction of the electric force that would be exerted on a small positive test charge so if this is a charge so if this is a charge then this is the small positive test charge then where would the force apply where would the force be so because it's repelling so the force would go outward so this is be the e and this will be e because it's trying to attract so the force will be the same as the direction of electric field will be the same as the direction of the electric force so electric field strength depends on the charge the distance so depends on the charge the distance and an electric field exists in the region around a charged object so electric field strength due to a point charge can be written as e equal to kc times q by r square so why is that the case we know that f here is kc times q into the test charge let's consider that q naught by r square so electric field strength e can be written as the force the electric force by the test charge q naught so the electric force is kc times q q naught by r square over q naught so q naught q naught gone so you end up with e equals kc times q by r square so let's take a problem and let's see if we can uh, use this problem to understand how electric force can be calculated so what is in the data now so the first thing that we want to do is we want to write down the given data from this problem so let me copy this part So this is the question that is given so from this let's write down the given data so first it says that there is a charge q1 which is plus 7 micro coulomb is at the origin so let's consider that that is the charge at the origin this is the charge at the origin and a charge of q2 at minus 5 micro coulomb is on the x-axis 0 0.300 meters from the origin as shown at the right so at the right side this is the charge here so they are asking you find the electric strength on the point which is on the y axis 0 0.400 meters from the origin so this is the point so this is the point where they are asking us and they have given us the measurements in terms of the distance between them So this distance between the two charges is 0 0.400 and this distance between the two charges is 0 0.300 and this is 0 0.400 meters. So using the Pythagoras theorem we can find the other distance as well. So we can find this distance as well. So using the Pythagoras theorem you get under root 0 0.4 square plus 0 0.3 square so which is 0 0.16 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.09 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 plus 0 0.09
which gives you 0 0.25 so under root 0 0.25 is 0 0.5 so this distance is 0 0.500 meters so that is the value that we have so one charge is plus so the q1 charge is plus here and the other one is minus so this charge q1 is plus 7 micro coulomb and this charge q2 is minus 5 micro coulomb now they are asking us to find the electric field at this single point so this point so we know that this is a positive charge so we are always testing this as a positive test charge so which means that it's going to apply the force upward so this is the e1 value and this is a negative charge which means that it's going to attract towards it so this is a test charge that's going to attract towards it so this one is e2 so first we want to know what is the net total amount of electric field so to find the total net electric field we have to calculate the individual values first so let's try and calculate the individual values so before we calculate the individual values we have to know this angle theta how do you find this angle theta again use tan theta so opposite side is 0 0.4 by 0 0.3 so theta becomes tan inverse of 4 by 3 so or 1.33 which can be written as 53.1 degrees so this is the angle so this angle is 53.1 degrees now we have the values that we need so we are between these two points so this becomes r2 and this becomes r1 so from the data that we have now so the values are q1 equals plus 7 micro coulomb so which can be written as 7 times 10 to the power negative 6 coulomb q2 is minus 5 micro coulomb so q2 is minus 5 micro coulomb so that gives you minus 5 times 10 to the power negative 6 coulomb so this is q1 and q2 now we have r1 which is the distance between the point so that is 0 0.400 meters r2 is 0 0.300 meters and the angle theta is 53.1 degrees so with the idea with the data in now let's try and understand how to take up the values notice that if this angle is 53.1 then this angle is also going to be 53.1 degrees so we'll notice why we need that so first thing that we want to do is we have to change the signs for e1 and e2 so first let us find individual values of e1 and e2 first so e1 is kc times q by r square so q here is q1 so it's 9 times 10 power 9 times 7 times 10 power negative 6 over 0 0.4 square so when you calculate that you get 3.93 times 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb in the same way e2 becomes kc times q2 by r square that becomes equal to 9 times 10 to the power 9 times minus 5 into 10 to the power negative 6 by 0 0.3 square I'm sorry 0 0.5 square so that is the actual distance so r2 here is actually 0 0.5 so this is the r2 distance so that value becomes so don't let us not take the sign because we have already mentioned that in the arrow so we don't need to actually represent the sign again again so with this the value becomes 1.80 times 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb so this is e2 and this is e1 so we have e1 and e2 but notice that e1 and e2 are in this mentioning one is this way which is e1 and this is e2 so this is the x-axis so in this this angle here is 53.1 degrees so we have to split them into their individual constituent parts so e2 can be split into e2x and e2y e1 can be split into e1x and e1y so but e1 here 
already represents e1 y so there is no e1 x so with the data in now let's try and find the individual e1 x e1 y and e2 x and e2 y so for e1 e1 x is 0 because there is no horizontal component for e1 so next e1 y is equal to e1 e1 becomes equal to e1 so which can be written as 3.93 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb so for e2 there is an angle so that angle here is 53.1 so e2 x we know the formula for e2 x is e2 cos theta and e2 y is e2 sin theta so e2 value is 1.80 times 10 to the power of 5 times cos 53.1 degrees and e2 sin theta again is 1.80 into 10 to the power of 5 times sine 53.1 degrees so when you calculate the individual values that becomes 1.08 into 10 to the power of 5 and e1 e2 y is 1.44 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb each now e1 y is upward e2 y is downward so e2 y so if you consider e1 y as positive then e2 y should be negative because it's in the opposite direction now with that data in so you are finding ex total and ey total so ex total is ex1 or e1x plus ex2 and ey1 plus ey2 so that becomes 0 plus 1.08 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb so which is going to be 1.08 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb and ey1 is 1.08 into 10 to the power of sorry 3.93 into 10 to the power of 5 minus 1.0 1.0 4, 4 into 10 to the power of 5 so that gives you a value of 2.49 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb so we have ex total now and ey total so we have to find e total or the resultant is the square root of ex total square plus ey total square so that will become square root of 1.08 into 10 to the power of 5 square plus 2.49 times 10 to the power of 5 square so when you calculate the value so try using a calculator that gives you a value of 2.71 into 10 to the power of 5 newton per coulomb so which is the resultant here so because it is a vector we have to calculate the angle as well so tan all tan phi is the formula so the tan phi is ey total by ex total so ey total is 2.49 into 10 to the power of 5 by 1.08 into 10 to the power of 5 so that when you calculate using a calculator so 10 power 5 10 power 5 gone so you end up getting a value of 66.6 .6 degrees i'm sorry so when you calculate phi that becomes tan inverse of 2.49 by 1.08 so which becomes 66. Point 6 degrees so this is the angle the resultant angle so and this is the answer so let me give you some more examples for practice you can try these on your own so pause the video right here and try to solve these problems so next let's discuss electric field lines so what are electric field lines so electric field lines are the lines that represent the magnitude of the electric field and the number of these field lines is proportional to the strength of the electric field so electric field lines are always the lines that are tangent to the electric field vector at any single point so here we consider the arrow here 
we represent it as the electric field. We use lines to represent the electric field. So this is the idea behind an electric field lines when you have positive and negative charges. So when you look at a general electric field line, for example, let's take a simple positive charge. For a positive charge, all the electric field lines are outward. So they all point outward. And for a negative charge, all the field lines are going to be inward. So for positive charges, it's outward. And for negative charges, it's inward. So what happens when a positive and a negative come close to each other? So the line starts from positive and ends up going towards negative. So basically curve and end up going towards negative. So they combine together and create a beautiful symmetrical field lines that look somewhat like this. So what are the rules that we have to remember to draw the electrical field lines? So the first rule is the lines must be must begin on positive charges at infinity and must terminate on negative charges at infinity. Next, the number of lines that are drawn leaving a positive charge and approaching the negative charge is proportional to the magnitude of the charge. So the larger the charge, the larger the number of lines that come from them. And the last and the most important one, no two field lines from the same field can cross each other or can intersect each other. So that's the idea behind the field lines. Next, let's come to the last topic, conductors in electrostatic equilibrium. So what are what is an electrostatic equilibrium and what is the behavior of conductors in an electrostatic equilibrium so in an equilibrium in an electrostatic equilibrium the electric field is zero everywhere inside the conductor so and any excess charge that is on the isolated conductor will stay on the conductor's outer surface and number two so the last point the electric field just outside the charged conductor is perpendicular to the conductor's surface so the electric field is always perpendicular to the conductor's surface. And the last one, if you have an irregularly shaped conductor, charge always tends to accumulate where the radius of curvature of the surface is the smallest. For example, that is basically at the sharpest points. So if you have an irregularly shaped conductor, the charge will try to accumulate at the sharpest points. So this is the behavior of conductors at electrostatic equilibrium. So with this, we end our lecture on electric field.